Welcome to the Successful Athletes Podcast presented by Trainer Road, where we interview successful athletes to make you a faster cyclist. And today we are joined all the way by somebody over in Norway by Trudy Nottelman. And I am totally butchering your name. I am so sorry about that, Trudy, but how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Doing great. It's good to have you. Uh, so I'm going to kick this off really quick by just running through your list of Palmares because they are vast and it is long. In 2007, uh, first place Masters Triple T National Championship. So Triple T is team time trial. Uh, in 2010, third place at the ITT or individual time trial national championships. 2011, first place at Triple T National Championships. 2012, second place Triple T National Championships. 2013, again, second place at Triple T National Championships. 2014, first place at ITT National Championships, 2015, third place at ITT National Championships, 2015, you set the Norwegian 30K women's record, you finished Cape Epic, and those titles are spread also, not just uh, master's titles, but also elite uh, titles as well. This is like a huge, like, Trudy, you, you're probably the most accomplished athlete we've ever had on this podcast. Um, I don't mean to put some sort of like pressure on you, but you have had a ton of success and that is super impressive. Um, with this, there's a, there's a gap between, cause clearly right now we're talking in 2021, but yeah. there's a gap there. And the gap is actually what we will want to talk about today because one might think that you just kind of like carried on and continued winning and everything else, but your um, relationship with the sport, particularly as it relates to motivation, uh, you've gone through a struggle with that. And I think that's something that probably everybody listening to this that's trained for any extended period of time can relate to. It's hard sometimes. So I want to get into that today. Um, But first things first, I'm going to read a quote that you said um, about how you started into cycling, and it's fantastic. So you said, I started cycling as a result of a wine and tequila infused bet when I was 31 years old. And I did a 540 kilometer Grand Fondo that year. My training consisted of being a spinning instructor and riding my bike to nursing school. So that, <laughs> that is, that's a one heck of a way to get into the sport. So like beyond the bet that you made with your friends, what made you take on such a massive challenge of a 540 kilometer Grand Fondo, like right off the bat? Like that's your first thing. Yeah, it's a 554 actually. But, oh, <laughs> oh my but I, I didn't have a, a relationship to that distance is just too far so I was more like yeah sure I can do it Uh, (laughs) and and I was uh, as I mentioned I was also a spinning instructor and I was always told that I was not a real cyclist uh, which was right Uh, since I haven't uh, hadn't done the the grand fund it's a really famous grand fund here in Norway called uh, Styrkepreven it's like the big uh, challenge for everybody uh, and it's not for the typical cyclist it's more like for uh everybody else to do it okay got it so uh, it was more like uh sure i can do it uh, yeah. <laughs> just to be uh yeah just on spite uh to all my <laughs> my customers in <laughs> spin class <laughs> <laughs> So is this like, was this a multi-day event or was this a one-day No, it's just one day. Uh, Wow, that is so long. 19 hours from start to finish. And we had, uh, I think, four or five stops for uh, for food uh, along the way. Uh, Yeah, it was just a nightmare. But uh, it wasn't, (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't really... uh, a physical struggle in the sense that a normal race is it's more more like um just painful just plain painful all the time oh, i can the, imagine yes yeah, what it's was horrible. the longest you had ridden prior to that <laughs> uh, from, it's embarrassing to say this uh from my uh from my school in uh, i live in the capital uh, in oslo and my hometown is uh, like 120 k's outside of that so i I rode home basically. Wow. Yeah. Th- that is and I had crazy. to call my mother and uh, get her to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you went straight into this 540 kilometer event, uh, yeah. jumping into the deep end. Like you're yeah. just like, uh, first things first, you went right off of that. So like in 2007, you ended up getting first place at masters team time trial national championship. So how in the world did that harrowing experience the 
the the nightmare of the experience, like you said, of that 540 kilometer ride. How did you did did it make you enjoy cycling? Uh, oh no, 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 uh, not at all. Uh, <laughs> I didn't cycle anymore for that for the that year. So um, no, but then I started to join. I was uh, actually I quite a funny story. When I started out, I was riding my uh, you know like a city bike, uh, not not a road bike or anything. Um, my first long ride, I ended up in a, a bike store, and the owner he. Um, he lent me a old bike just for this uh, Grand Fondos. That was it was also my first ride on a um, on a road bike, and uh, and then I was I, I think I was just then thinking that cycling that's just something you do for multiple hours. So I just started to um, ride by myself the year after, just long rides without competing or anything, and um, and that felt good and. Yeah. And then you, what made you decide to compete? And that's just who I am. I all I, I compete in everything all the time. I started out as a, um, a show jumper. Do you know? Oh, for horses. horses? Yeah. 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 I, I worked with horses since I was uh, old enough to, to be allowed outside. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I worked all around Europe with horses. So I always, been competing and um so when i stopped the horses and started nursing school i was sort of given this opportunity to start competing again and then it's just i, I just love it i yeah. just love to pin on the start number so what made you focus specifically on like on time trials because that was uh, your main focus right for for quite some time yeah, that was a coincidence, I think, because uh, in the beginning when I started out, if you had, um, oh, how should I say this? The highest level in uh, Norway is called the Norwegian Cup. And when I started out, you had to do uh, a road race, a time trial, and, and a crit uh, each time. And then you get your general classification. So you, you just had to do it. Uh, and I kind of like uh, time traveling. You you kind of decide everything yourself, the pace, how hard, uh, everything. And I love that. I'm kind of a control freak. So <laughs> it suited me fine. Uh, and I don't like uh, the, big, uh, the big pelotons. I don't particularly enjoy riding in those. So <laughs> it's quite scary, I think. So time traveling, you can just focus and just work hard. Mm. And I like that. Did you see success like right when you started in the sport? Did it take you a while to get to the point where you were winning races? Uh, since I started out as a master's athlete, it didn't take very long because uh, there were so few competitors. Mm. Uh, like maybe four or five in my age group uh so so it actually uh, it didn't take much time to be on a quite high level and sure. the next step was then the, the elite and actually the first uh ttt it wasn't master it was elite as well oh cool yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> uh but i had some uh, medals from the masters uh nationals as well so um why do you think that you had success relatively early on even in the elites like what put you at a relative advantage to your competitors i think i've just learned quite early uh doing the horses uh, that you have to work hard you have to if you want to go somewhere you just you have to put your head down and just work hard for what you want uh so and maybe I'm genetic, genetically lucky, I don't know, because I've never been doing sports as a child or anything. But yeah, I just I just know how to work hard. Yeah. And and I'm really stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Which is key for a cyclist, particularly like with with time yeah. trialing in particular, I feel like uh it it bet like a, a stubborn personality is one that really sticks to their goals and goes yeah. to it and you have to do that with time trialing. It's so hard. Yeah. Like 
Yeah. You know, you want to quit and there's nobody around you and there's so many opportunities for you to just give up, but yeah. you have to be stubborn. You can't do it. But I think I, I kind of like uh, that I'm, I'm in charge all the way. You know, you can just quit whenever you want to. And I like that as well. Yeah. Uh, because when you're in a road race, you sort of have to follow the bunch. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure. So uh, when you, within this like early time period, you also went and did Cape Epic. Was that in 2007 as well? Or what year was that? Yeah. yeah. How long had you been racing prior to racing Cape Epic? And then how long had you been riding mountain bikes prior to Cape Epic? Uh, I've been racing uh, for, I think, two or three years, maybe. Cape Epic, uh, just a little bit in the Masters Cup, and I've done two mountain bike races. Oh my goodness! I, I feel <laughs> I feel like I'm prepared going to Cape Epic. Uh, this you're is, not. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that is amazing. Once again, like you know, just going straight into the deep end. Why, why did you do it? And then let's start. Let's talk a little bit about what you learned from that, because sometimes an experience can be so like big and overwhelming. If yeah. you're not prepared for that, it can be kind of like detrimental. But anyways, how, why did you do it? Uh, I think it, m- much the same reason as uh, the first Grand Fondo. I've <laughs> heard about <laughs> it from a friend. <laughs> <It's all laughs> <that. laughs> this is the worst, the longest, the hardest mountain bike race. And I was like, yeah, I think I should try. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm just very, very stubborn and defiant. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if someone tell me I can do something, I will always try, mm. I think. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, and it sounded like a fun experience because it's uh, on the other side of the world and it's Africa and it's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it's a good experience as well. So how'd it go? Uh, <laughs> I think we finished. <laughs> <laughs> 25th in that's the mix class and that's uh, just in the middle yeah that's and, good uh, yeah that's all right <laughs> <laughs> you have high standards clearly i think that's really good for somebody that hasn't been racing for more than two or three years and only done two mountain bike races that is astounding like what what was the experience like for you personally though was it was it something that you were motivated to keep going on day after day or were you just relying on your stubbornness to get you through yeah a combination of those two i think <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah I, I don't like to quit uh and uh it was yeah, when you started out in the first stage you don't want to you don't want to quit you you would want to finish and you will want to see what the next stage is like and uh, maybe you'll get lucky and see some elephants or uh, yeah, it's mm. lots of things and it learned learned me to push my boundaries and learn me how deep I actually am able to to push myself before I quit and uh, yeah it's it's a great experience um, for a rider who wants to get stronger because Was you that... read really... yeah sorry no that's all right uh, you get you get really tested was it your hardest uh, accomplishment yet? Do you think? Yeah, 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 definitely. How did you, uh, yeah. you keep going when you were tempted to quit? And it was super hard, and probably like technical and and exhausting. Yeah. And you were you were sleeping in tents and yeah. and you're dealing with like subpar food and everything else. Like, yeah. how did you in those moments when you wanted to quit? What made you not quit? You have to just break it down and take it, you know, hour by hour. And suddenly you have a good hour uh, and you feel great. And it's, it's, it's nice there. It's lovely scenery and everything. And then you forget about your, uh, your, your pains and aches and everything. And, and then you do that for the next hour and the next hour. And then it's, oh, it's only one hour and then we'll finish. And uh, yeah, and you look forward to to your tent actually <laughs> and, <laughs> and the food <laughs> so yeah you just you, you you can't start out and just oh my god this is eight days of pain you just have to take one hour at the time i think mm. uh, and then i had some good days in there as well um 
and in the end i actually learned uh how to bring real food uh, <laughs> with me on the stages instead of you know gels and bars and that's uh yeah. took me about six days to learn to eat right. That's got to be was, so hard on such a, like a back to back to back with that many days of racing. The last yeah. thing you want to do is eat that just artificial stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And your stomach do not want to take it anymore. Uh, in the end. <laughs> so I actually learned a lot about uh, eating from you uh, in general, uh, just a little awesome. bit too late. <laughs> shoot we should have been there we should have been doing this in 2007 um yeah you should have. Yeah. but then yeah, you were too young <laughs> yeah it's true it's true um so with another question on cape epic what was your pace like because if you've been doing time trials and that sort of stuff that's pretty high intensity work but cape yeah. epic is just so long and there's so many days back to back did you find that you were riding, did you start out like easier than you thought, or did you start out really hard and blow up and then dial it back? How did your pacing work out? Yeah, I, uh, the plan was to start out, uh, easy. Uh, but of course, uh, the first stage you, you blew up, uh, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone was starting, uh, hard and it started uphill and mm. yeah. Uh, but then again, uh, I think we spent six or seven hours on the first stage. So you, you just naturally you just take it up and down uh and i i think maybe i did zone two then uh every day not much more than that yeah that just came naturally um it's it's like your your body is going to tell you how fast you can go <laughs> after a couple of days <laughs> uh, if you want to last the whole the whole race so i didn't think much about that really and <laughs> And since I was such a bad mountain biker, I was doing a lot of walking as well. So, <laughs> right, I assume so. Like it's it, with all the people that you're with and everything else, and the dust. And all, it's just a different. A lot of the time, when we think of these races, we'll think of what we see on like the highlight reels, which is usually showing like the leaders of a certain yeah. classification. And it's probably a really different experience. I assume it was for you, right? In the back, of, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but it's uh you, you you end up going with the same people every day so it's like uh, your own race in the back so we had uh, some couples that we were sort of competing with uh on about the 20th place or something but uh yeah yeah you find your people it's yeah it's, it's a great experience you should look forward to it <laughs> I am. I am <laughs> nervously. I am. So um, I only thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll take your vote of confidence. I need that. Um, yeah. with, so did mountain biking, did you continue to want to race mountain bikes? Did you, did this make you love mountain biking or were you still thinking time trialing is my focus? No. Um, I love mountain biking. I mean, that's my favorite sport. Uh, mm. I'm just not good at it. So yeah, that's the, the most fun races I do are always mountain bike races. I just, so yeah, I think Cape Epic uh, started that. Uh, it's so different from road racing. Uh, I mean, if you have a bad day in a road race, you're just having a bad day. Mm -hmm. If you have a bad day on your mountain bike, you can still have some nice experiences uh, on the way. You can have some tricks and uh, it is nice trails. So it's, yeah, I love mountain biking. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Um, did that, do you feel that that made you a better cyclist? You're focused on mountain biking. Did that make you a better road cyclist at all or help you even perhaps in time trials? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I think mountain biking makes you a strong rider. Uh, you, you can't rely on anybody else. You have to pedal the bike yourself. And it's, uh, sometimes it's really hard because the, the ground is not, it's not like smooth, uh, sailing, like time traveling and, road racing yeah it makes you i think it makes you harder mm, than yeah just racing and you you learn to handle your bike sure which is why it's important right? <laughs> yeah it turns out it's very important right yeah. um, <laughs> so looking at like the cape epic and looking at your your first foray into the sport and then jumping into like the highest you know com level of competition in the elites and masters there in in your country you seem to have a pattern of like jumping, diving headfirst into the deep end, right? Um, that's like like kind of how you start things. So yeah. 
how is that a blessing for you? And how is that a curse? Because once again, I bet there are athletes listening to this that also have that same will or natural tendency to just jump headlong into it, go to the deep end first. So how is it a blessing and how is it a curse for you? It's a blessing because it gives you a lot of great experiences and great, uh, you, you, you go places where you normally wouldn't go and see things you maybe wouldn't have seen and, and you learn a lot about yourself. Uh, so I think it's a blessing, but it's also a curse because you, some, you end up being unprepared <laughs> all the time <laughs> and you're setting yourself up for failure. That's really what you're doing when you're not prepared. You are potentially setting yourself up for failure, and, and that's uh, that's painful as well. And yeah, yeah, I think that's the 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 biggest problem with how I choose to do things is that I'm also fall flat on my face like fifty percent of the time. Sure. So <laughs> how do you how do you manage that? aspect of it being a being a person that likes to succeed and do hard things and being admittedly stubborn how do you yeah. handle it when you fail oh not very well <laughs> <It's hard>. I'm, <laughs> I'm so hard on myself uh and it's uh, that's something i should work work on and um, i'm trying to work on it but it's like uh if i fail I feel like, you know, like a total failure, like my, me as a person is also now a failure and it just spreads out. Uh, so, and that's not even, uh, that's not just races, it's like failed workouts. Uh, yeah, if I fail thing, but as I'm really hard on myself. Mm -hmm. So that's not a good thing though. How did, what if you, so in those moments when you're experiencing mm -hmm. that disappointment, yeah. Fast forward or rewind back to you in like a better state and situation. What would you tell yourself in those moments to help pull you through that difficult time? I always try to tell myself not to be so hard on my on myself and not to bring myself down and maybe try to see the big picture of things. Um, so i know what to do i just don't do it <laughs> <laughs> hey, we could probably say that for almost everything in our lives right like that's how that's yeah. how we live a lot of the time we know what to do but doing it yeah. is, is, is it's, tough. it's yeah. really hard though but I, I know that you have to give yourself some slack i mean it's not the end of the world to fail a workout or get a seventh place or anything it's just it's not very important in the big big scheme so but when you're in the middle of it, it's, it seems like the most important thing in the world. Yeah. Me as well. Right. Yeah. And it's that perspective of stepping outside of that moment is really important yeah. for sure. And really hard. Yes. Super hard. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you feel like, especially a person like you, that's so self-motivated and driven, you feel like when you give yourself the big picture that you're that you're somehow being like a, you're, you're being, you shouldn't be easy on yourself and you're being too easy on yourself, but that's not yeah. the case. Like, no, I know that, yeah. but you're always uh, a little bit afraid to, mm -hmm. uh, to be easy because maybe, uh, being hard on yourself is what have brought you to where you are. And I think the right thing is that if you are a little bit easy on yourself, everything just would be easier yes. <laughs> and you would just look good. <laughs> Yes. But yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, yeah. sometimes I, I do it. It's uh, not all the time. Yeah. We're speaking the same language here. I have this same internal <laughs> dialogue all the time. Yeah. Um, it's a tricky one. So yeah, it is. You had uh, time trial success, like we talked about, and you're building up all the way to like 2015 and 2016. Um, so much hard work. Everything else yeah. has gone into you winning these championships. And actually, before we get to this, I do want to talk mm -hmm. about the nuances between team time trial and individual time trial. I, I skipped that yeah. part and we should talk about that. But so you mentioned that you don't like riding in a Peloton, mm -hmm. which I can understand. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't love it either, but you, you team time trials are very much dependent upon other people. Was that hard for you to like, learn how to like 
that the the tight rotations and how you have to stay so coordinated and close to each other was that difficult for you and how did you get better at that no it wasn't really because uh my team they were they were like my people uh we were there together it's uh a different feeling uh you're working to to make it, uh, each other better and you're trying to help your your teammates and make it easy for her to get back on your wheel and it's different uh aspect of it uh, so no i never struggled with that mm. really did you um throughout your your career have you had like people like a support system uh with you like whether it's close people that you hold like uh, coaches or friends or anything else like that. And cause I'm, I'm curious about this cause this is something that a lot of self-starter people tend to kind of like, just keep to themselves. So I'm curious how that worked out for you. Uh, no, actually I haven't had anyone around. I had my boyfriend. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. I had that coach I had several coaches but I have always and that's why I love trainer because I've always struggled with getting the right coach you know mm. because you need someone who knows you and know how much to ask of you without asking too much and I had a real struggle finding that person so basically I've been on my own um yeah with my boyfriend <laughs> yeah so, so that's, that, that yeah that's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting point. Cause a lot of athletes, like I, I resonate with that too. I yeah. kind of like, don't want to have other people around in the circle. Admittedly, yeah. my family is a huge support system. My, my wife yeah. and my son, they're like great support systems for me, but, yeah. um, that's more of just a personal curiosity. So thanks for answering that yeah. because I, I tend so. to see this pattern that exists with a lot of self-starting people like this, that they kind of have their own controlled system, you know? Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay. So in 2015 or 2016, uh, you were trying to qualify for the national team. Um, so first of all, let's talk about like, how do you qualify? Like what, what are they looking for to put you on that team? Uh, for me, they gave me a, a very specific, uh, things to do. I had to make the podium in the nationals and I only got third. So then they asked me to do, to set a new record. And then the record wasn't quite good enough. And then I had to do, uh, and that was the worst, I had to do a seven day stage race, a road race, a UC uh, uh, 1.2. Yeah, the Tour de Ardèche, I'm sure Amber has done it. It's like this, um, it's uh, in the south of France, uh, seven days in the mountains. Uh, and then I had to do uh, a UC 1.1 time trial in France, just five days after the stage race. Wow. Yeah. So, so how did, how did all that go? And, uh, what was the verdict on you making the national team? Yeah, I didn't make it <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, in the end they thought that my, um, my average speed in the last time trial wasn't good enough. Oh. So yeah. So you would, was was this like your main goal that you were working for for years? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It was. laughs> must have been. Yeah, so being a person that's hard on yourself, I'm sure that you were hard on yourself for this. Um, what what was it yeah. like when you didn't? Uh, what was your motivation for cycling like after you found out that you didn't make the team? Quite low. Uh, I couldn't stand the sight of my time trial bike. I just put it away. But then uh, that was that was fifteen, and then I I kept on training, uh, just you know because I have a hard time giving up, mm -hmm. so I tried in sixteen as well, but I couldn't do it. I uh, didn't have any results, or I, I I came fourth in the nationals, but that was yeah you know that was not good enough, <laughs> and I didn't win anything, and then I had this uh, crisis with my boyfriend and everything, and my life just fell to pieces. I had this, um, uh, I think that it was so hard because uh, it got clear to me that cycling had been like the, the biggest priority of my life. And then I was, okay, uh, where to now? I'm mm. 42 years old, what to do? <laughs> so 
Yeah, that's like yeah, it, it 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 your, yeah. yeah it, it becomes okay. your identity, right? Like yeah, it like did. Like who you were, and yeah. then to try to get there, and then to have the door be closed on kind of yeah. like reaching that goal that has to be hugely demotivating. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, I I questioned everything I've done and all the choices I made up until uh, that uh, that year, which is yeah. Yeah. But uh, I got through it. Yeah. In the so, end. Yeah, and that's. Uh, d- did you take a break from cycling, or how did you get through this? Because this sort of demotivation is pretty common for a lot of athletes that, especially, are like kind of like you and I that are so focused on the goal like this. Yeah. Yeah. I. <laughs> Uh, I didn't consciously take a break. It just kind of ended up being a break because I didn't sleep enough, didn't eat enough. So in the end, I was like, okay, I cannot do this anymore. My body cannot tolerate it. So I I stopped cycling for, yeah, I think from maybe September and didn't start again until after Christmas mm. and, and or maybe after New Year in 17. And, and then I, yeah. What was the goal when you started back with cycling? Was it different? Were you like, I still want to go for the same goals as making the national team? Or did that change? It did change a bit. I still wanted to win. I I still wanted to prove myself. But uh, after a couple of races, I I just felt that, okay, I I, I cannot do that just yet because I... It takes you more time than you think to get back on track when you have been not sleeping and eating enough for a long time and your body actually needs more time to recover than you expect. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I, I did some races, I even did some UC uh, races and it was always like when I got into, into the middle, I was like, oh, gee, I can't do this. This is too hard. Uh, yeah. But uh, in the end, I mean... I fought, uh, in 17, I was basically back on track. Yeah. So when you restarted here in 2017, uh, yeah. you, that you, you kind of like got back onto the train, you started to see even results like you saw yeah, in yeah. place. Then you uh, mentioned yeah. that you got into a point of, of overtraining. Um, yeah. can you explain what led to that and what it was like? I was too eager. I it was so nice to sort of feel like myself again after all. I, I didn't feel like myself uh, after the, the rejection in in fifteen. Uh, so I was too eager and I trained too much and too hard and yeah, I was basically trying to be a machine. Uh, mm-hmm. And in the beginning of eighteen, I think maybe in springtime. Uh, I just couldn't get my heart rate down. I couldn't get my power up, you know, all the basic signs uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> that we all choose to ignore for a long time. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> very true. <laughs> it yeah. just stops. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and maybe then someone on the outside have to come and tell you. <laughs> yes. yes. Sounds very uh, familiar. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So then I dialed it back down again. And yeah. I was sort of just tired of the whole thing, really. I didn't have the same spirits as I used to have. Mm. Was so, that was that kind of harder in a way to have like gone through that period of difficulty in 2015 and 2016 to have come back and as soon as you feel yourself to then go through it again? Was the second time even more difficult to go through? Yeah, I think maybe I think maybe I gave up earlier the the second time it's like okay whatever um this is not for me uh i became very negative about the sport i I just didn't find any joy in it uh anymore so it was easier to quit or i didn't quit i never quit i always trained but um i didn't compete as much and i didn't have any expectation to myself i just entered races and sort of just did them if you can understand Mm -hmm. Uh, I did a lot of mountain biking, though. But um, yeah, it was maybe not harder, just different. Yeah, I yeah, I can understand that. Um, there's like that saying of like "fool me once, shame on you; fool me twice, shame on me." Sort of a thing. Yeah, yeah, and, that's right. And that's I've right. I've felt that before in struggling with injuries when like oh, yeah. 
yeah. the injury comes back and I'm just like, I, I'm not frustrated at the injury. I'm frustrated at myself. Then, yeah. and then that's like a whole different layer. It's tough to unwrap <laughs> all of that, right? Um, We're so complicated people. We uh, all we're trying to do is just pedal a bike. Why do we have to be so? Yeah, complicated, I know it's right? the easiest thing in the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Why make it so hard? <laughs> I know, I know. We're we're good at overcomplicating things. Um, yeah. So, it, I guess that that kind of brings us to fast forwarding to 2020. Um, yeah. So you had taken some time to just to ride, to train and to, but to do things differently and to not, maybe not just, um, what the, the best way to probably say that is you just, you gave yourself kind of the time and what it needed to be able to kind of just enjoy the sport a bit more. Would that be fair to say in between that 2017 to 2020 time? Yeah, uh, maybe, but, uh, I don't know if you can, uh, uh, if you can familiarize with this, but uh, I enjoy the sport, but if I'm not good, I don't enjoy it as yes. much. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm, not many people like to talk about that, but I'm doing this because I like to win. I like to be good. So when I cannot achieve that, I'm not going to just use a lot of time um, mm. on this. Do you get what I mean? To totally yeah yeah why dedicate yeah. time into it if there's no yeah. outcome that you're going for at the end no I, I i love to train i love to be outdoors and everything but then i could just do something else or maybe scale it down so yeah i i, I always uh even in those years uh those late years uh leading up until now i always had this i mean sort of wish of uh, getting back into real shape without really trying, I think. Just yeah. other than some half and half of sure. trying and trying. <laughs> I can relate to that of like hoping that like you, it's not that you just like magically come into form, but like no. you want to get back to there. But then there's also this like kind of fear that you'll go through the same pains and struggles that you've gone through before. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is like really relatable for me. Um, this is, <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about 2020 though. So yeah. in 2020, that's when you started using trainer road, but what that's brought you to that point? Was it that constant hope of hoping that you would be able to find like com competition at the top of competition once again, or what made you start to pick it up? Uh, I started using trainer road because of your podcasts. Awesome. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because listening to it and um, hearing that other people have the same struggles and the way you you guys are so honest about what you do and what you achieve and don't achieve and what your struggles are and everything, that's it made me feel like I had this community that I that I could lean on sort of and find answers uh, to to all my questions and yeah, it felt like I'm not a very social person. So it felt like I had a community without having to actually meet people. <laughs> yes. yeah. Once again, yes, I relate to that quite a lot as well. I think a lot of people yeah. think that like I'm like an extrovert that like as soon as I get into a situation, I can't wait to talk it to everybody. Um, yeah. But I just do a lot of podcasts, but I love my alone time. <laughs> so like, yeah, that's that's yeah. my alone time. That's, uh, that's the most important thing for me. Yes. But yeah, it was perfect. It. Uh, and uh, and I I got to borrow um, a smart trainer from a friend that was in March uh, 2020. Yeah, 2020 is the that's last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know it's been a weird year. And, I, <laughs> and then I I just borrowed it for a month and I used uh, this one month free of trainer and I was like, yeah, that's that's cool. But now it's outdoor season, so thank you um, and goodbye. Yeah. Uh, and then I. <laughs> And I bought it uh, in October uh, 2020. And then I had listened to the podcast all year. And then I just thought, yeah, why not? I, I'll just try it. I'll, I always open to try new things. I think that's my strength. I'm never afraid to try a new approach to things. I'm actually very good at just that. Mm. Uh, and this was a new approach and since sweet spot is something that i really love uh believe it or not 
<laughs> right. <laughs> I started sweet spot bass, and I just loved it. Yeah. And and I think the the genius part of training is that you can uh, there's a plan there and it's scientifically based, but in the end, it's still you that makes the decision, and that's that's just what I love uh, being a control freak. <laughs> if, it, uh, if a coach uh, gives me something uh, you should train this and this um, I would I mean I would bend over backwards to do exactly what I'm told even though it's not good uh, or even if I'm sick or but this is not the case with trainer this is uh, I'm the one making the decision in the end so it's perfect for me and you mentioned that so you did sweet spot base I know now you're in general build or sustained power build which is yeah like we mentioned before, um, it's, it's, uh, you called it a, a nightmare that makes you faster. Uh, that's that sort of sustained training. <laughs> it's a sweet so nightmare. Hard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hard work that makes you faster. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that you've seen somewhere around like an 18 watt FTP increase. And I, yeah. I want to take a little bit to talk about that. Cause a lot of the time we talk and we talk to people and they're like, yeah, I had 110 Watts increase or some, some of these big ranges, but yeah. you, you're truly like at a very high level of probably your potential having, yeah. you know, trained and raced and, and competed at such a high level for so long. Mm -hmm. So is 20 Watts significant for you or do you get disappointed that it's not more? How do you manage no, that no. being the person oh, you are? No. no, I'm just happy uh, because <laughs> every time I do the ramp test, I'm like, Oh, please don't do too much. Please don't do too much. <laughs> because then you know the next week is going to be awful. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, no, <laughs> I'm happy. I I've gained like uh, maybe five watts every ramp test, and that's uh, that's great. And it's uh, I I have faith in in that it will keep uh, giving me watts. Yeah. Uh, and as I told you in the beginning, this uh, this ride outside today was like yeah, that was new numbers. So I have awesome. faith. Yeah. Seen unprecedented numbers. Um, yeah. So you you'd trained with structure before. We talked yeah. about, uh, is it that self-coached thing? Is that what's different this time about using trainer road is the fact that you get to be the one that makes the decisions. Is that what's different or is there something else that's allowing you to stay even more motivated this time? And it is, uh, it's also the way, uh, the plants are, um, built. They are, the progression is, it's perfect for me. I, I haven't failed the workout yet. And that never happens. I always fail workouts uh, or did in the past. So I think it just suits me but perfectly. Uh, the level of it and uh, the, uh, the structure of the, the each session uh, suits me. It pushes me. And I, sometimes I, I question my will to live uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> during some of those workouts. Yes. Uh, but still, I can always finish. Uh, if I just push hard enough, I can always finish and I can do the next one as well. So I think that's what got me hooked. Uh, I was really looking forward to each uh, workout in the beginning. Now it's more, uh, yeah, I'm more, uh, <laughs> not just looking forward to it anymore. It's uh, also a little bit scary. But, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when you go into the build phase. It gets real tough. Yeah. Um, so what are your, what are your goals now? You're, you've always been like clearly like an achievement focused and oriented person. Like I want to achieve a certain thing. So what are your goals now, um, moving forward from, from this point? Yeah, I think I, in the beginning, uh, I had, uh, I had a goal about being on the podium in the nationals again. Uh, but I think it has to be a two year plan just because of the pandemic, because, uh, mm. Uh, this year it's such a huge gap between the professionals and the and everybody else because the professionals are in europe riding uh race or doing races and the rest of us are just back here doing training mm -hmm. so maybe after your plan to get back on the podium maybe top five this year i hope um yeah doing some more stages on the mountain bike just awesome to <laughs> which, which races do you have planned on the mountain bike? I have planned on the, the Andalusia bike race uh, in May, but if I can get out of this country, I will do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tricky year. And I always wanted to do the, um, the Joburg to Sea. Have you heard about that? I haven't, no. 
oh, I, then you should do that. Uh, I've heard from another guy uh, who did the Cape Epic, and he said Joburg to see was the best stage race on the entire planet, just single track, every day mm. for nine weeks. And where's that at? It's uh, Johannesburg to see. Oh, so awesome. It's, yeah. Ooh, but, yeah, that uh, be it's fun. Yeah. That's oh, what a bummer. Um, yeah, that would be. So you've got TT goals eventually, mountain bike yeah. goals, um, more just competition goals. So are you to the point where you still you still want to be competitive? You want to achieve just like you did before? It's not that now you've let go of competitive goals. Is that correct? No, no, no. Oh no! Oh, absolutely not. I still want to win. I still want to get on the podium. Uh, I don't think I will give up until I'm on the podium once more. And that's my final, the, the end goal, so to speak. Uh, maybe then I'll change sports. <laughs> <laughs> back to, no, back but, to equestrian, uh, equestrian work, possibly. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I've tried so many different things this year. This uh, train road is new, and I've since I listened to you guys, I also tried this eating eating thing. <laughs> so <I'm nervous. laughs> Amazing how that works. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't eat much before. <laughs> no, yeah. actually, I, I was always very bad at eating. I was I could do like a yeah, five hour ride on a on a banana and be like, yeah, that's all right. And up until last year, actually, so this is the first year I'm I'm fueling my rides and my training and basically my life <laughs> yes. so so i'm quite excited to see where that's going uh it feels good no awesome it's, yeah uh, makes and, so. and you mentioned the fact that like you're able to do the next workout and the next workout and i think yeah. that so much of that comes from fueling <clears throat> i i fall into just like the trap of everybody else and this is prior to yeah. us launching adaptive training yeah i'd fall into the trap of saying it was the workout's fault when really, yeah. like, if I fail to work out, but really, if I look back at it, it wasn't the workout's fault. It's that mm. I didn't fuel well enough, or I didn't recover enough. And I know, know. So. and but we do it all the time. It's I know, like, all the time. The learning curves are just flat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's so true. Well, what, we're gonna have to get you on adaptive training too. That'll be exciting. Hopefully, we can get you yeah. early access to it, so then you can yeah, have that. That's that really nice. exciting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm really excited to see where this is going, really. And I'm so grateful to Train Road. Really, I am. This has really been a new beginning for me. And yeah, and I'm excited to see where this is going. And it's if it's going the right way, it's all th thanks to you. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's your hard work, so we should be clear on that. No, no, no. It's really <laughs> so we give you the structure, but it's, it's your hard work. Um, that's just awesome to hear. Trudy, thank you so much yeah. for this. And also... Uh, please keep me in the loop on, on what you do this year when share whatever yeah. you feel you want to share, but it'd be yes. really fun to, to know and kind of cheer from afar for you and support you in that regard. And I'm sure other people would want to do the same. Um, are you on social media or anything like that for people to get in touch with you? Sure. I'm, uh, I'm not very good at social media because I'm just not of that generation, but I am on, uh, Instagram, uh, on, uh, to do the nut. We'll put the link down below in the, yeah. in the, in the description with your, whether you're listening to this on YouTube or you're listening on the podcast. So, and I'm on Facebook as well, of course, as through the not home. Cool. So if anybody has some questions, just don't hesitate to ask. I'm quite open uh, to answer anything. If anybody also is watching this on YouTube right now and you think that Trudy should go do Cape Epic this year with us, just let us know in the comments below. It'd be fun to have her show to that. So <laughs> not to I throw your miss. season off. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, Trudy, thanks so much. I appreciate this. If if anybody's listening to this, hopefully you found some some points of, of, of relativity within this to be able to kind of relate to these struggles that an, all of us endurance athletes go through. And, and hearing how you've gone through it all, uh, Trudy has been helpful for me at the very least. So I thank you for it. If you want to yeah, be on good. this podcast and you're listening right now, you can do so just go to trainerroadcom slash S a P and you can let us know how trainer road made you a faster cyclist. And please do that. I would love to hear about it. Um, or made you successful in whichever way you want to share, uh, however that success came about and whatever it may be. So please do that. And I'd love to hear from all of you. Uh, Trudy, thanks a bunch. We'll keep in touch. I'm excited to hear how yeah. your year goes. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. It's nice talking to you. Absolutely.